Hello everyone, Stepan here. Uh, the round 10 of the US Championship brought a lot of excitement and I'm happy to say that Hikaru Nakamura finally played a good game and, man and managed to score his first win. Uh, he was playing uh, with white pieces against Var Akobian and after e4 Akobian of course went for his French defense, his signature opening, we have d4, d5, knight to c3, bishop to b4, the win over French by Varuzian Akobian and this is the most fighting way uh, for black to play against white in this setup and this is the most aggressive vari variation of the French arguably now white continues with e5 he has to gain space in the center because if he doesn't he will just be worse now c5 the uh, the common pawn break in the French defense the best the best move for black and now a3 and of course uh, by far the most common move in this position is to take with bishop c3 bc3 doubling white's pawns and white of course uh, has to keep defending d4 and after knight to e7 queen to g4 this is the poisoned pawn variation and the most common line in the french however after pawn to a3 chasing the bishop away or forcing it to take Varuzi Nakobian went for a very uncommon variation which is played about 10 to 15 times uh, less than the than, the, than taking on c3 he played bishop to a5 which is the retreat variation of the win over and now this must have uh, surprised Hikaru Nakamura because this is an uncommon line and if uh, black takes on, on c3 doubling white spawns then he, he has more than equalized according to the engines and theory says that black is uh, great after, uh, after bc3 and after bishop to a5, white retains his advantage. Now, uh, Karo, uh, I'm sorry, Karwana. Nakamura continues with the best move in the position, b4, chasing the bishop further away. And now c takes d4, the Armenian line in the retreat winner. And this is uh, very, uh, very good because uh, Varuzian Akobian, of course, is an Armenian-American. He moved to, to America from Armenia when he was 18 years old. So he is playing, I think, the only chess variation that bears the name of his home country. Now after c takes d4, knight to b5 is played. This is the most aggressive move, immediately attacking the d4 pawn. Bishop to c7. And now here is where the variation branches out. Here uh, Nakamura can choose from four different, uh, from four different moves. Arguably, uh, the best uh, the best move is what he played, and that's f4. I will just show you what happens if he takes on d4. First of all, if he takes with the queen, uh, that doesn't work because of knight to c6, chasing the queen away. And then after uh, knight takes c7, that would be the best try, uh, getting rid of the bishop to make sure the pawn isn't attacked, attacked twice. Queen c7, bishop to b5, pinning the knight. Knight e7, reinforcing, and now f4. After a6, he would have to give up the bishop, bishop c6, knight c6, queen to c5. You can see that black has an edge here because this structure is very weak. Uh, black managed to reinforce his position, he is uh, ahead in development and simply better. The second option after bishop to c7 would be to take with the knight that of course loses immediately to bishop e5, pinning the knight to the pinning the rook to the knight. So this wouldn't work. And the last option, which was the best option uh, perhaps he could have tried, was knight c7 check, taking the bishop, queen c7, and now knight to f3, simply attacking the, the d4 pawn once again. He's going to play bishop to b5 and attack it three times. So there isn't really a way for uh, Varuzian Akobian to defend. But he played the most active move and the most aggressive continuation, he played f4. And after f4, of course, uh, black is now simply a pawn up. White has 7 pawns, black has 8. And after bishop to d7, chasing the knight away, uh, knight to f3, bishop takes b5, getting rid of the knight. Uh, I'm sorry. Bishop takes b5, getting rid of the knight. Knight to c6, uh, now defending from the check. Uh, and bishop to d3 going back, you can see that black is clearly a pawn up. And this variation after uh, after bishop to d7 could have gone a different way after knight to f3. Varuzian Akobian uh, could have perhaps been surprised by the move uh, uh, knight takes c7. And after queen takes c7, bishop to b2, white stands much better because the d4 pawn is, is falling. But after bishop to d7, uh, Hikaru Nakamura didn't play that. He played the slightly more passive knight to f3. And this is uh, this is perhaps his only mistake in the opening. The f4 move is okay, it's aggressive, but here he should have taken the bishop and after queen c7, bishop to b2. And he would have had a much more active position. Of course, black still has a problem bishop. He still has to uh, develop both his knights. And white is white is okay.
But after uh, bishop to d7, he played knight to f3, and now we have this continuation. Bishop b5, bishop b5 check, knight to c6 covering the check, and now bishop retreats to d3. And now after knight g to e7, black is actually more than equalized. His position is very comfortable, and the d4 pawn is defensible, what's most important. Even though it's doubled, it's a central pawn, and it's providing a lot of control on the central key squares. After Nakamura castle, Dwar played uh, bishop to b6, reinforcing the pawn. Now we have king to h1, getting away from the dangerous diagonal because the king was the pawn was pinned to the king so this is a prophylactic move but uh, arguably a waste of time we have queen to d7 better was perhaps queen to c7 immediately putting pressure on the c2 pawn we have rook b1 uh, knight to f5 uh, which okay isn't the best move uh, he could have played something else but knight to f5 is okay now of course nakamura could have taken the knight and if bishop f5 e f5 uh, this pawn seems dangerous, but it really isn't, because black has a great way to, to blockade the pawn, and this is what uh, Akobian must have calculated. First of all, you are going to get away from the tempo on uh, with pawn to b5, and Nakamura would have probably continued with a4, a5 blocking down the position, b5, now knight to d8, and the knight is preparing to come to d6 to blockade the pawn, and this means that black's position is perfectly fine. After knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, knight to e6, the position is now materially equal, both sides have 7 pawns, However, uh, white's uh, queen is misplaced, white's f4 pawn is weak, of course playing g3 would weaken it, would weaken it further, and, uh, and the f4 pawn leaves no other option for the bishop on c1 except to develop to a3, so you could argue that it's good that there, but perhaps it, it wouldn't have too many targets. After knight to f5, however, Hikaru Nakamura didn't take, he played a4 immediately, which is weaker, a6, and this is where Varuzi and Akobian went wrong. A6 is a very bad move because you are uh, you are saying that your bishop is going to stay on this diagonal defending the pawn, and this isn't such a good option. Much better was to play A5, and uh, this move just gives Hikaru Nakamura too much edge, too much initiative, and a far too dominant position. Even though it's such a simple mistake, after if he had played A5 played a5 then simply uh, b takes a5 would be the best bishop a5 uh, here nakamura would probably take on f5 e takes f5 knight takes d4 knight takes d4 queen takes d4 and castles black stands okay and he has a very active bishop his weaknesses uh, are compensated by white's weaknesses on f4 c2 and a and a4 so the position is equal but after a6 uh, nakamura has was now given uh, too much time and he was able to put a lot of pressure immediately and this is where varakobian starts to crack down under nakamura's pressure first a5 of course chasing the bishop to a7 now already you can see that the bishop doesn't have that much scope anymore now bishop f5, e f5, bishop to a3 developing the bishop, and now if uh, black castles, of course, the move b5 is a killer, so we have rook to c8, and now b5 anyway, uh, exchanging the pawns, a b5, rook b5, now knight to d8 is played by Varakobian, because a lot of stuff was threatened already, he has to at least gain a tempo on the rook, knight to d8, but now queen to b1, not moving the rook, but attacking the b7 pawn, we have rook to c3, uh, threatening the bishop. Now from this position on, perhaps the best move was bishop to d6, getting in the middle of var's position, and after queen c6, rook to b2, g6, let's say, rook to e1. White is of course much better, almost winning, but uh, Nakamura didn't play the most accurate move. After rook to c3, in his own style, he played the most aggressive move, which uh, is by no means bad, it's by no means a mistake. It just gives, it just gives up uh, a portion of his advantage. He played e6, immediately striking in, at black's position, and the move has a very clear purpose, and that's to free up the, the e5 square for the knight, where the knight would be much better placed than on f3, and of course, this more than compensates for a loss of a pawn. Akobian takes with f takes e, knight to e5, of course the bishop can't yet be taken because uh, he gained the tempo on the queen, queen to c7, and now queen to b4 defending the bishop, and of course if, uh, if rook c2 then the position is losing, uh, he, will, he will have a much better position. So uh, Varakobian now plays g5, and this is an aggressive move, uh, trying to get some, get some counterplay on the flank, while your opponent is playing on the other side of the board or in the center. However, uh, now 
Hikaru has a killer move. He plays Queen to A4, and if after Queen to B4, uh, of course, if he if Var took the took the pawn, I forgot to show you that, that then Queen A4 is just winning because he would have to play Rook to C6, defending the Rook, and uh, covering from the discoveries by by the Rook on on B5, and this position is just completely busted and winning for White. But after Queen B4, G5, Queen A4 is played anyway, so now he has to react anyway. And the only way to save the position uh, was found by Varakobi and he gave up the exchange. We have rook takes a3, queen takes a3 and now g takes f4. Uh, of course now not taking uh, the pawn with the rook because the knight is loose on e5. So rook e1 defending the knight. Queen to c3 offering a queen trade. Of course Nakamura is attacking so he declines. Queen c1 we have now rook to g8 trying to activate but any attack that... Uh, that black could create isn't uh, that dangerous for for white's king so this is all hopeless now we have knight to d3 attacking the f4 pawn twice king to d7 now queen takes f4 threatening a lot of stuff already and you can see that all of white's pieces are perfectly placed the knight is great on d3 it can also jump into e5 immediately both rooks are uh, placed optimally and the queen is far more active than black's queen now Var tries to hide, he plays a king to c8, but now a6 opening up further lines towards the king, ba6, rook to b3, gaining a tempo on the queen, queen to c7, and now he does uh, accept the exchange of queens because his position is just winning, queen c7, king c7, rook to a3 attacking the a6 pawn, bishop to b6, rook a6, king to b7 attacking the rook, rook to a3. You know, this is just an exchange for two pawns, soon to be an exchange for a pawn and a technical win for, for Nakamura. So by this point, I'm sure he was, he was thinking, okay, I finally got the win because as you must know, he had, uh, he had no wins so far at the US Championship, a very poor performance, uh, all draws and one loss. So very bad. And he was at four out of nine after nine rounds. And now we have a rook to g7. Uh, rook to b3, rook c7, rook e to b1, now attacking the bishop twice, rook c6, but now knight to e5, dislodging the rook, rook to d6, and now rook to h3, and there is no defense to the to the h pawn, of course, if rook to d7, knight takes d7, so he tries uh, knight to c6, we have uh, rook h7 check, king to a6, rook to d7, forcing a trade of rooks, of course, if knight takes knight, rook takes rook, and the bishop is falling, rook d7, knight d7, bishop a7, h4, e5, h5, and uh, Hikaru's pawn is already unstoppable, Var just didn't realize that yet, e4, trying to drum up something with his own cel central majority, h6, d3, cd3, bishop d4, trying to prevent the pawn from moving, of course, covering the h8 square, but that doesn't work, because d, uh, d4, f4, h7, and now knight to e7 is tried by by Varuzian Akobi and trying to reinforce the the the, the h8 square by moving in the knight to g to g6 but now after knight to c5 he resigned and the threat is obvious of course the knight can't be taken if bishop takes knight then h8 queen and king has only two squares uh, if it goes to a5 then simply uh, knight to uh, knight to b3 would win the bishop and if it goes to a7, then an even, even stronger move, rook b7 check, king to a8, and the knight is falling. Of course, there is no more uh, way for, for black to prevent queening. Once again, if he takes the knight, h8 queen. If he doesn't take the knight, rook to e8 check, and then queening taking the bishop, and that would be two pieces up for a pawn and completely lost. So after knight to c5, Borussia Nakobian gave up and resigned. And I think this game was... Uh, a very nice display of attacking chess by both players. Varakobian played, played a very aggressive line, which is commonly played, which is uncommonly played. He took the pawn and then defended it, and he tried to drum up an attack on the on the queen side. But Hikaru Nakamura outbested him uh, in a very strong fashion, and he just finally played like him like himself this game. And had he been this good throughout the tournament, he could have won. And I'm sorry he wasn't, but perhaps next year. Okay, everybody, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you like this attacking game by, by Hikaru Nakamura and Vara Kobian, and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.